Have you ever wondered how much control you really have over your weight? New research indicates it's much less than previously thought. And the reason is locked deep in your DNA. In the largest study of its kind to date, researchers in the UK looked at why some people managed to stay thin, while others gain weight easily. What they found is that the genetic dice are loaded in favor of thin people and against those at the obese end of the spectrum. People are often surprised to learn that genes play quite a major role in controlling our weight. So if we take any two people, at least 40% of the difference in their adult body weight is influenced by their genes. Previous studies have mostly examined the genetic makeup of people who are overweight or obese. For this research, Professor Faruqi and her team created STILTS, the study into lean and thin subjects. After assessing almost 2,000 skinny people from across Britain, what they found was striking. No less than 74% of the STILTS subjects had a strong family history of thinness, suggesting that genetic inheritance may play as much of a role in being skinny as it does in being overweight or obese. Earlier research had already shown that up to 80% of obese subjects had overweight or obese parents. So the next step was to compare the genetic makeup of these skinny people with that of obese people to see whether the same genes were involved. Could skinniness and obesity be two sides of the same genetic coin or are they entirely separate? The results showed that many of the same genes are involved. And they seem to work in two ways. Some regulate the way we metabolize our food to generate energy and create fat, as might be expected. But many also act by affecting our appetite. And that was a real surprise, because before these findings, people tended to think, actually for many decades, that if there were genes that affected your weight, they would do so by affecting your metabolism, how you burn calories. Actually, what we found is that we have circuits in the brain that regulate our appetite, something that we used to think was simply down to free will and choice. And actually, it has a biological basis. As a result of this study, it may soon be possible to generate an obesity risk score that will tell a patient whether they are carrying the genes that could predispose them toward putting on too much weight. And that could be an important step toward curbing the worldwide obesity epidemic that's been emerging over the last few decades. Today in the United States, a mere 2% of the population are underweight. Only 27% are at a healthy weight. 32% are overweight. And no less than 40% are technically obese. That's over 70% of the population who are at risk. At risk because obesity is a major contributor to some of the leading causes of death, including heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and some types of cancer. And since childhood obesity is a major predictor of serious health problems later in life, the early identification of those children who may have their genetic dice loaded against them would be a major breakthrough in medical science. And usually people where there's a strong genetic influence will be tending to gain weight from a very young age, often before the age of 10, and sometimes even before the age of five. And really what we're finding is that if you're looking at very heavy children, then you're more likely to find genes that are having a strong effect. Now that's not to say that of course, how much food that you eat and how much energy you burn is not important, of course it is. But our response to those factors, how much weight we gain, how much weight we lose, is strongly influenced by our genes. But calculating exactly how many calories your body needs is far from simple. We use the energy we get from our food in three ways. 70% of it is used just to keep our bodies alive. This includes things like breathing, pumping blood, and controlling our body temperature. It's known as the basal metabolic rate, and it varies from person to person according to their age, height, weight, gender, 
and, of course, genetics. Surprisingly, only about 20% of the energy we get from our food is used in physical activity. And this can vary widely depending on the sort of work we do and our lifestyle. And the final 10% of the energy we get from our food is used in actually digesting it. Taken together, the average number of calories burned by a woman between the ages of 31 and 50 is about 1,800 per day, if she's sedentary, 2,000 if she's moderately active, and 2,200 per day if she's very active. For a man in the same age range, it would be 2,200 calories a day if he's sedentary, 2,400 if he's moderately active, and 2,800 if he's very active. Weight is the balance between the amount of food that we take in and the amount of energy that we burn. And we have a very fine balance between these two things. In fact, for most people, our weight remains stable for long periods of time, despite fluctuations in the amount of food that we eat and the amount of energy that we burn. And what that tells us is that we actually have a system in our bodies for maintaining our weight or for maintaining the balance between the energy intake and our energy expenditure. Unfortunately, not only are many of us taking in far more calories than that each day, the quality of the food we're eating is also having a major negative impact on our health. Known by nutritionists as the Western Pattern Diet, it is characterized by an overconsumption of refined sugars, saturated fats, processed foods, with added salt, and sweetened drinks. These modern dietary staples have been implicated in a wide range of illnesses, ranging from obesity and diabetes to cancers and a number of autoimmune diseases. Over the last few years, the U.S. government launched an aggressive campaign to communicate the need for healthier dietary choices to redress the balance. But recent research shows that all of us still have a long way to go. In April of 2019, The Lancet, a leading medical journal, published a report which showed that suboptimal diets, eating too much unhealthy food and not enough healthy food, were responsible for roughly 11 million deaths globally each year, surpassing even tobacco as a leading cause of preventable deaths. It's too early to say whether gene therapies will ever be able to reverse this devastating trend. So until then, diet and lifestyle are still going to be the major weapons in the arsenal against obesity. But this new research by Professor Faruqi and her colleagues has shown that healthy, thin people are thin partly because they have a lower burden of obesity genes and not because they're morally superior. It's very simple and easy to blame people for gaining weight when we know that there's a lot of food around and we know that it's quite easy to be relatively inactive. But actually trying to understand that not everybody gains weight in the same way and some people find it very hard to lose weight and actually proving that's the case by finding some of the genes involved is I think a really important step forward for helping patients but also for challenging our perceptions of obese individuals. <laughs>